Hello, my name is Rosalind Love and I'm from the Department of Anglo-Saxon, Norse and Celtic and I'd like to introduce you to one of my colleagues, Dr Rory Naismith. Hi Rory, Hello. can you tell us which part of the Anglo-Saxon, Norse and Celtic uh, course you're responsible for? I take care of England before the Norman Conquest, which is looking at the developments in, in England from the beginning of the, the English um, in the 5th and 6th centuries through to the Battle of Hastings in 1066. That's great. Um, can you tell me what it is that students find surprising when they start following your course? Well, I think there's a number of things. Probably the biggest, I think, is that although this period is sometimes thought of as the Dark Ages because people were especially dark and nasty to each other and because we don't know very much about it, in actual fact, I think students are taken aback by just how rich and interesting the information that we have for this period is that we have vast amounts of not only incredibly juicy and, um, and vivid narrative texts like Bede's Ecclesiastical History of the English People, the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, various others, uh, but we have a huge amount of, of documents, charters telling us about, about um, people giving land to one another, we have um, buildings, we have coins, we have a huge amount of both written and, and physical archaeological evidence and we use all of these in ASNAC as we try to, to get a grip on this, this period. Fantastic and, and how, do you, how do you teach your course? What's involved for a student? What a, a student would experience taking this course is we have a, a lecture every week uh, over the course of the, the two teaching terms um, in which I or, or uh, some other uh, eminent person would stand up and explain the, the subject of the week. Uh, and that might be um, the, the, the uh, I know, Viking raids. It might be the reign of poor old Ethelred the Unready in the, 11th in the 10th, 11th centuries. Um, we cover a, a huge amount of material. Um, uh, the other, the other uh, two major elements are that on top of those, those lectures, there'd be a strong expectation that you would all be reading uh, to keep up with those lectures and enrich what we're talking about when we meet to, to actually have some face-to-face -face time. Uh, the, the other element is what are called supervisions. Um, and you'll have probably heard about this from some of the other, uh, 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 other elements of this, this, uh, this uh, virtual open day. Um, but these are when you would sit down with uh, I, with, with me, or with one of the other um, people who teaches uh, England before the Norman Conquest and talk through a subject on which you, the student, have written an essay. Um, so you write an essay and then you discuss it in the supervision. Great, thank you, Rory. Now, I happen to know that you, your area of speciality is something called numismatics. Could you tell us what that is and what's exciting uh, about it? Absolutely. Numismatics is the study of uh, coins um, and what they can tell us about the, the, the world that produced them, the people who made them, the people who used them. Um, and for the Anglo-Saxon period, these are a very, very important resource. Um, Anglo-Saxon coins are very numerous, they're very diverse. Uh, lots of them have been found in recent years by people going out with metal detectors and turning up sometimes one, sometimes five or 10,000 in one go. Occasionally you'll see these come up in the, new, in the news in the last few years. Um, and we can look at these in all sorts of ways. We can look at individual ones, which will tell us who the king was, give us a picture of what he looked like, tell us the, the name of the individual who actually made this particular coin and where as well. And then we can put together a whole array of these um, and really get a uh, a detailed image of that segment of society, of society which was involved in making the money and putting it into circulation among the rest of the population. Mm -hmm. Would you like to tell us about a particular coin? <laughs> I'm going to uh, share my screen and show a picture. Yes, uh, uh, here's one we made earlier as it were. Um, yes, yes uh, this is what an Anglo-Saxon silver penny looks like. Now as, as that suggests these are made of silver so they're a penny bought rather more back then than it would nowadays. Spending a penny was really quite a big deal. Um, <laughs> these probably had the buying power of several tens of modern pounds or, or dollars or euros. Wow. Um, uh, but having said that, for all that it looks nice and big on the screen here, these are actually about the size of a uh, modern silver penny. So just to confirm that, here is the, the actual coin that you see on the screen there in my, in my fingers, just to give you a sense of roughly what sort of scale we're looking at. 
here it is from the side you can see it's very thin um, this one was made in the reign of king ethelred the unready ethelred the second who was king between 978 and 1016 this one probably comes from about the 990s and you can see it on the left we've got a picture of the the, the obverse the front of the coin which very much like modern currency has got a, a bust of the ruler looking very spiky haired almost elvis like though this is trying to trying to to show ethelred in the model of roman emperors that that in itself is interesting it says this is where they looked for their ideas of authority and kingship but then around that we've got his name spelled out with a little cross at the beginning ethelred rex anglorum ethelred king of the english in latin and so this is what you had on on certainly by this stage all the coins they told you very unambiguously who was in charge on the other side um we've got the uh, the name of the person who made the coin who was called eadwald um and then it tells us that he was based uh, on on cant uh, which is short for canterbury and canterbury was one of about um 60 70 places that would be making coins at this time uh, from york down to the coast uh, channel coast and each one of those, or, well, each one of those would have had one or more of these characters who would produce coins. And these were a little bit like mini banks or bureau de change combined with actual making of coin. You'd turn up at Eadwald's, Eadwald's place of business and you'd hand over some old cash or uh, a you know, silver plate or something like that, say, make me some coin. Off he'd go and back he'd come with a bunch of silver pennies, much like this one. Fantastic. Hmm. Great. Thank you very much, Rory. My pleasure.